Okay, welcome back. A quick review of where we left things last time. We got to an exciting stage where uh, we had these two objects here. These first at the top, we have a, uh, a gra what I call a graph. It's some blue dots, nodes connected by uh, purple lines, which we call edges. And beneath it, we have a matrix that I associated with that. It's empty at the moment because I'm just going to fill it in. So remember what I did last time is I gave all of these nodes labels. I uh, labeled them one, two, three, four, because they're four. And then I put, uh, uh, I labeled the uh, edges with letters just to be different and to avoid confusion. And then what I did was at the top of a matrix, I put uh, the one, two, three, four to uh, correspond to the four nodes. And then each edge had its own uh, row. And then all I did was I assumed it was an, you know, a zero matrix, a null matrix. And then what I did was I go to each edge. So let's go to edge A. Oh, and by the way, I also remember put these arrows um, on the edges. OK, and those were up to me. Now I went to edge A and because it left node one and went into node two, I did that. I went to edge B and because it comes out of node two and goes into node three, I put that. And then I went to edge C, it comes out of node one and goes into node four. Uh, edge D comes out of edge four and goes into node three. And uh, finally, edge E comes out of node four and into node two. OK, and then everywhere else, remember, uh, was zero. OK, and that's how I constructed this uh, matrix I called A. And what we call this, this is uh, something I'm to tell you now, is we call this the incidence matrix of the graph. OK, the graph is at the top. Below is its incidence matrix. OK, it's just got zeros, ones, minus ones. OK. Look at those. Couple more graphs. They look kind of different, don't they? Assume that these are two different graphs. Okay, so this is graph one, and this is graph two. Okay, they look kind of different, but they've both got four nodes and they've both got five edges. So um, it turns out that um, both have the same incidence matrix A, the one that I just wrote down, if I identify this with one, two, three, and four, and this as one, two, three, and four, okay, and this is node uh, edge A, B, C, D, E, and this is node a, B, C, D, and E. Okay, you can just check. I'm going to leave you that as an exercise. The point is that these incidence matrices are quite useful because what they do is they kind of factor out the fact that, uh, you know, they could look different like this. Uh, because ultimately, the way that all of the pieces are put together for both of these two graphs, even though some of them have longer edges than others, it doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. Yet, later we'll, we'll, we'll start incorporating kind of this notion of how long an edge is. But at the moment, all we care about is where the two nodes are connected. OK, so that's interesting. We can have uh, this incidence matrix kind of factors out um, things to do with length. At the moment, it's just whether something is connected to something else. OK, so it kind of encodes, mathematicians like to use the word topology, that encodes the topology of this, of this thing. Here's uh, something else to look at. Look what I've done there. I've taken the uh, original graph that we had before and I've added an edge, F. Okay, here it is. I've added this edge. Okay, and I've put an arrow on it too. I've chosen an arrow. So nodes one and three now are connected directly by an edge. OK, so I've changed the graph. It's a new graph now. And in fact, what would happen to the incidence matrix is that all that would happen is that if we just go back to this, all that would happen is um, if I wanted to add edge F here, remember, it's a new edge, then what I have to do, what did it do? It came out of node one and it went into node three. 
So that would be the new incidence matrix. It would now have more rows because it's got uh, more edges. OK, well, let's go back to this uh, graph where I've added the edge f. And it's got an interesting feature that I want to point out to you. If you notice, if I go to any node, so example node 1, let's pick node 1, it's connected by a unique edge to every other node in the graph. So for example, it's connected by this edge directly to node 2, it's connected by this edge directly to node 4, and it's connected by this new edge directly to node 3. And you can check that that's true for node 2, for example. It's clearly connected, look, let me just uh, draw another colour here. It's clearly connected by these three edges to directly to the other nodes. So we call such a graph, and those these aren't completely typical, okay? We call them a complete graph, okay? One that has precisely this feature that each node is connected by a unique edge to every other node. Okay, let's look at something else. Here's a more complicated graph. Okay, I've taken the original four nodes, one, two, three, four, and it looks like I've added uh, three more nodes. I've called them, naturally, five, six, uh, and seven. And naturally, in order to construct the uh, associated incidence matrix, I've added three more columns. Remember, columns correspond to nodes. I've also added four more edges, okay? So, uh, and I've called those, naturally, F, G, H, and I. Okay, and now you see down here, look, I've added four more rows because there's four more edges. Okay, so I've expanded. You see how I've expanded this incidence matrix. So let's just finish off this matrix here. If we look at edge F, it with the arrows I've drawn, and I picked those at random, uh, uh, I've got a minus one from three, and it goes a plus one there. Uh, G, edge G is this one. It goes from out of five and into six. Uh, node H is this one, and it goes out of 5 and into 7. And finally, edge I goes out of 6, look, and into 7. And then what I do is, just to finish this off, I just add these zeros everywhere, okay? Because remember, there's only zeros except for where you put the 1s. The plus and minus 1s uh, dictated to you by the edges. Um. Suppose I did this look. Let me just switch to this. This is the same graph that I just uh, showed you, but look what I've done. I've removed edge F. What has that done to me? I've still got seven nodes. I've now got only eight edges because I've removed one. And what do you notice about it though? What new feature has, what feature of the graph has changed because I've removed that edge? Well, the thing that's kind of obvious is suppose now, quite apart from a complete graph, if I now start at one, I can certainly get to four and two directly. And actually by a path of edges, I can actually get to node three. But there is no way that I can get from node one to nodes five, uh, six, or seven, okay? Vice versa, if I started at node six, I can't get to any of the nodes over here. So we call uh, such a graph, so this is an example of a disconnected graph, okay? We call it disconnected precisely, it's a natural name, what better name? Because there's two parts, there's kind of bits you can't get to from the other bits. OK, so we call that a disconnected graph. And how, just to finish this lecture, suppose I went back to my uh, my incidence matrix here and I removed edge and I removed. And I removed edge F. How do I get the incidence matrix for that? I just delete. This row. Simple as that.